Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on robotics. This is the first video in the series of short tutorials on robotics. I'm Harshal Oza and today I'm going to talk about coordinates and coordinate frames, especially in the context of robotics. So this tutorial is about intuitive understanding of coordinates and coordinate frames in the context of robotics. So first of all, let us understand why do we need coordinates? So let's try to understand first the idea of points. So points are abstract objects one can say in, let's say, a two-dimensional space, we visualize a point like this. So what is the dimension of a point? We can't put any dimension to a point, but if we have two points, then it makes sense to talk about the distance between the two. So let's call this point O1. Let's call that point O2. What we could do is assign some distance from the origin. Now, if we say that we have a coordinate frame that is given by X and Y axes, then we can say this is the x1 intercept for point O1, y1 intercept for point O1. Likewise, we can say there are intercepts x2 for point O2 and y2 also for point O2. Now, by itself, a point may not, <clears throat> may not be useful, but when we start collecting group of points that may be more meaningful. So for example, we want to go from city one, travel from city one to city two. We can abstract, we can put an abstract meaning on a large map to or given abstract meaning to city one by point oh one. On a map. Likewise, if we associate this point O2 to CT2, then surely this distance suddenly becomes meaningful distance between two cities. So, what is that distance? That distance is nothing but under square root. Now, this is derivable or can you can derive this straight from Pythagoras theorem because we are then talking about that particular triangle. Now, why do we need them? Well, why do we need them for robotics? What is the idea of coordinates for the robot? So let's try to look at a simple robot. Let's say we have a cylindrical base this is the base which remains fixed and that particular cylinder can rotate so this can rotate in clockwise or anti-clockwise direction when looked from the above now we can think of a link which is attached to a robot like this. Now, 
and we can have another link attached with the fixed base. And we can have yet another one. And this gives rise to what, what is generally known as a serial link robot. Now, serial link because we are adding a link over a link over a link. So, so let's say usually base is given link zero. This becomes link one. And that particular vertical portion becomes part of this link one that becomes link two and final one becomes link three again coming back to the idea of coordinates and coordinate frames you can think of the origin which is lying exactly at the center of this particular fixed link I can call it 0.01. At the base or at the top of this surface, I can call that 0.02. I can name this particular point 03. And I can point, I can label this as 0.04. So you can now see what is the point or what is the utility of defining coordinates for robots. If I say that I have in my three dimensions, this coordinate frame given as X zero, Y zero, Z zero, I can now start defining distances from this point O zero to point O one, I can define a distance from O0 to O2, as well as O3. Likewise, distance between point O0 and O4. If this robot is doing any meaningful work, it would be generally towards the end of the arm. And I'm also interested in what is the distance between this O5 and O0. Usually this is called world frame. And this is the origin, which is generally known where the robot is with respect to this frame where the robot is. So this is the idea of coordinates for any point on the robot. You can talk of these particular hinges. So in this particular case, this robot moves in the cylindrical swivel motion. Here, the motion is like this, and the hinge is available here, and the third motion is available in that direction. So, why do we need it for robots? To measure distance from any given point. On the robot. That is the first usage. Also, if target point is known, which usually is the case when you apply this robotic application to do something meaningful or pick and place, for example, this robot picks a part from a conveyor and places it, a, places it in a bin or something like that, then target point coordinates are known with respect to O0, X0, Y0, Z0. Now we want your point O5, for example, to go to that particular coordinate. Let's say that point is somewhere else, O6. Now we are talking about the distance between this particular point O6 and O0, and we want this O5 to coincide, travel, 
O6. So O5 and O6 should become coincident. If that is the application, then the utility of defining coordinates is to make the robot move to a target point. So this is the utility of coordinates in the context of robotics. In general, coordinates are nothing but you can, per you can perceive them as distances from known points, either you talk of this point or particularly O2, but we are attaching two numbers to represent that in two dimensional uh, plane. If it was just one dimensional, we would have a number line. So in mathematics, this would be termed as R1. Here we are having two dimensional plane. So we will say real line, two real lines are orthogonal to each other and we are covering a plane. So that's why we call this R2. As such, a point is an abstract object, but we combine two points, we suddenly have a line, which is R1, which signifies the distance between the two. That distance can be used in robotics to do some meaningful work and to define certain meaningful distances between target and where the robot is currently located. So this is why we need them, need coordinates in robotics. Okay. We touched upon the idea of frames. Now let's talk of coordinate frames and why do we need them for robotics? So in general, let's talk of uh, coordinate frames. Now, if we choose a point, we can say this point is to be displaced by certain units on the single line there. And I, I say that the point is actually displaced here. And I call this O2. This distance is known and it is perfectly logical to say that if I move this particular particle located point located at point O1 to point O2. But what if I use the sentence rotate point O1 while keeping it exactly at that point? Does this sound logical to ask or logical to say it? Actually, it is absurd. This is absurd to say. A point cannot be rotated. Now, why do we need rotation? Let's take a very simple example. Let's say a vehicle is traveling on a curved path. The vehicle will not travel like this. This is not how it will travel. It will travel like this. So you can see that if I want to represent this in some ways, in mathematical way, then I would like to use the idea of coordinate frames. For example, here, the frame would look like this. Here, the frame would look like this. But in fact, if I attach a frame rigidly to the vehicle, it would mean that frame here would look like that. Frame here would look like that. In this position, it would look like this. So now, initially, the frame was like this. But now it has rotated by some angle. So the idea of coordinate frames is intuitively intertwined with the idea of rotations. So any day-to-day -day applications of moving objects will involve rotations if we want to express that in terms of mathematics. So we will need coordinate frames. So if, if a point is located here, we can attach a frame to it. We can call that x0, y0. Let's call this O0. Now, if we want to rotate the frame, that's not absurd to ask. You can say, I can now rotate the frame while keeping it fixed at O0. So now the new frame can be
x1 y1 while keeping it there rotating the original frame or i can say that i'll not only rotate but also move it somewhere displace it somewhere so whatever we discussed in the previous slides we can displace this point to somewhere else let's say o1 and i can say x1 y1 i not only rotate it but i have also displaced it by this distance so this is the intuitive understanding we need frames to define rotation mathematically why do we need it for robotics let's again look at this robot if we rotate this particular link one with the, with the fixed base now here let's attach some frames as we have talked about here i'll attach a frame like that i can call it x0 y0 z0 then i can the whole part here is one integral block so i can actually attach a frame here i'll now say z1 x1 y1 likewise i'll attach another frame z2 x2 and y2 now it is plausible or logical to think about x1 y1 z1 rotating when the cylindrical block swivels while o0 x0 y0 z0 remain there fixed because it is let's say mounted on a floor this particular block moves and at that time x1 y1 z1 will rotate likewise when there is a relative motion between this link 1 and link 2 denoted by this green arrow the frame x2 y2 z2 will rotate with its with respect to x1 y1 z1 and so on so this is why we need coordinate frames to intuitively represent the rotation for any robot so it can be now you can think of n link serial link robot so n means it can be any number usually in industry it would it could be 6 axis 6 degree of freedom robot and you will have serial link robot like this where the end effector is either a welding tool welding gun or it can be a gripper to pick and place it will have its own frame and the idea is how is it related in terms of its position and rotation for this we need coordinates and for rotation we need coordinate frames so this was a very short introduction on why we need coordinates and coordinate frames for robotics stay tuned for more such videos and we'll discuss about how to represent this mathematically in the next few short tutorials thank you